Hello, my name is Erin Elizabeth Wehrenberg and this is some of my poetry. The first poems I'm going to be reading are from my first book, Notes on Healing and Clarity. It's called, It is Automatic for a Reason. Just as we must keep breathing when we experience physical pain and inhale the deep air into our wound for relief, we must keep breathing when we experience emotional pain. Breathe in the infinite healing powers of the universe and breathe life into these emotions coupled with pain. There is no shame here. This is body mind working together to heal. A process often looked down upon even though it is the most powerful. Keep breathing. Its power gives us life when we are unintentional. Feel how much power we unlock when it is intentional. Feel it and know it. If you have to question whether something is or isn't, whether you can or can't, whether things are okay or not, you probably already know, you're probably just seeking permission. This is called dreams. In order to make room for your angel, you have to let go of the protection. In order to keep me from freezing over, I need you to swallow my heart whole. I do not need to change my mold to mesh into you. I do not need to bend for you. Close the door all the way. But please know I miss you. What's the difference between pretending it's real and it is real? Steel feels nice to roll your name off my tongue. Shed. This same body contains the continual intertwines of all that I am and all that I shall ever be. An infinite process of becoming, shedding, and shifting my energies and soul, tangibles and intangibles. This is why I have never understood your question, what will you do for the rest of your life? I will become, shed, and shift into new me's, but somehow I will still be me. And so to answer your question, for the rest of my life, I will become. And these are some poems from my second book, Soften. Mine. My trauma is just that, mine. You cannot have it or use it or claim it. It happened to me, planted itself inside me and made a home in the deep depths of who I am and now is still alive as part of me. It is mine and mine alone. Years ago, I used to believe that one magical day in the forest of unicorns and rainbows that it would be gone forever. That it would see itself out and never come back. Pack all of its belongings and stop leeching my soul. But that was years ago when all I did was dabble in denial. Now I prefer to act in acceptance and in this place I know that my trauma is mine. Not my fault or what I deserve, but it is mine. I know it so deeply, have felt all the sizes and shapes it comes in until it expresses itself in a new way, until it arises unexpectedly, always one more time. A relationship that can come out of nowhere and shake me to my core or stop me in my tracks. But each time I'm stronger, I can feel it more clearly. I can ground more quickly. I can wait for the panic to end because I know it will. And when it does and my trauma goes back to sleep for however long, I tuck it in and I know it is mine. Amidst everything you deserve to enjoy your life. For a long time, since I do so much existing with my own trauma, other people's trauma, trauma in general, and all the pain and injustice in this world, I thought being light and joyous in the face of these things was rude, was shameful, was not allowed. How dare I walk with lightness and joy when there's so much dark and pain? Who did I think I was to laugh, smile, and heal all at the same time? Who did I think I was to be silly and free with my body amidst all the power that was exerted onto me? Who did I think I was offering a smile or a joke through understood shared pain? Then I realized, I thought I was me. 
I thought I was the beautiful ball of pulsating genuine joy and on purpose miracle divine light of existence me. Of course I am allowed to be light and talk about trauma. Of course it is a false binary that staying in my joy cannot coexist with healing pain. Of course I'm not doing a bad job at working against injustice if I act silly. Of course choosing to smile and take care of myself through everything is revolutionary. Of course, it is the deepest act of personal power to take care of myself and have fun when the whole world tells me not to or that I never could again. Of course, of course, of course. My light is mine. My joy is mine. I talk about pain. I talk about trauma. I name it and call it out. And it is my battle daily. No one does this work for me, just like no one does the work to keep my joy alive. This is why I exist in lightness and joy. They are mine. Through everything, they are mine. And who and how I choose and practice to be every fucking day. This light is mine. And no matter how bad you try to make me feel for it, you cannot and will not ever pull it out or take it away from me. Outgrown. Uninterested in loud masculinity that has to slam the door and bang on cabinets so you know it's there. Masculinity that has to attack and blame, cut and destroy instead of tend and sew. Masculinity that reeks of sterile plastic instead of warm cinnamon. Masculinity I have been overdosing on my whole life. Roots. The question is not whether to give love, the question is always love. The question is for whom, how to give it and when. The question is, have I evaluated myself properly enough to make sure this is the right thing? The question is, is this actually love or am I disguising revenge, anger or pain with the title of love so I can get things for me? The question is, is this what I really needed or have I assumed how and when this love will be received? The question is, is doing nothing actually the best kind of love right now? The question is, is this a void or is this love? Only. You are the only one who can forgive yourself. You are the only one who can heal yourself. You are the only one who can silence the aggressive, not good enough. Be honest with yourself. Trust you will hold yourself gently and sturdily. You must stay with yourself because sooner or later you will find you are the only one who can stay there forever. Loved ones are an extension of you, but they are not you. Controlaholic. My deepest pain used to come from trying to know everything. And knowing came from controlling, and controlling came from obsessing, and obsessing came from distraction. An exhaustive cycle until one day I thought, why do I need to know? And it was done, and I threw it in the trash. A collection of future pop lyrics for when mainstream healthy for when, okay, a collection of future pop lyrics for when healthy relationship dynamics become mainstream. I realize when I am bringing past pain to our present situation and I'm willing to check myself. I respect the decisions you make. I understand that my ego wants to make every decision you make as approving to me about me, but it's actually always about you and where you're at. I trust that even when I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, I will communicate openly with you in order to make things work. If things don't work out, I know it just wasn't meant to be and I didn't fail and I do not need revenge. We both like each other, but we're not in healthy enough places to be together. So we'll stop seeing each other for now. I won't make conversations that are about ways in which you have felt unheard about me to give myself validation. As your romantic partner, it is not my personal responsibility to take care of basic things in your life. I only want to have sex with you if it's consensual. How much sex you want to have or not have doesn't determine your worth as a person or as my romantic partner. 
any romantic partners you had before or after me has nothing to do with me and doesn't change or take away what we had with each other. Expressing feelings is a great opportunity for us to get more clear about our relationship together, not to start fights that are rooted in control. I don't wanna be mean to each other, even if we are teasing or joking. If our time together ends or we want to be something for each other that is different than what we are now, it's okay. No matter what happens between us, I will be okay. I love me the most and you are not bothered by this. Let your body be resilient. Sometimes when I'm sitting in a coffee shop counting my blessings, I think about those years in that apartment when I just used to walk inside and collapse on the floor crying, how hunger took a leave of absence and I was moving, but I was so disconnected. Couldn't feel anything in the motions. How it always gets way fucking worse before it got better. And here I am in the four digit number days of sobriety, sitting in my body, the same body I used to drag across carpet floors and somehow fold into the shower. Showers where I could barely pick up the shampoo and soap. Showers where I would sit and let the water fall on me while I would switch the faucet from cold to hot to cold to hot to try to feel anything. To, break, to try to break the numbness of finally wanting to be back in my body. To feel the trauma and the assault and the pain and the abuse for the first time all the way without alcohol or drugs or pills. And with the full force of intention, the intention to heal. It felt so bad. How can remembering things with my mind hurt so much? My body remembered them, hadn't forgotten. It is the merging that awakens the pain that the conscious mind turned off. But I did it every day. Fed cold oatmeal on silver spoons into my throat and wrote those poems and made those phone calls and went for those walks until I began to feel touches of safety again. One day I let the wind kiss my cheek. A few months later, the sun touched my bones and somehow I smiled. I breathed in a full breath. I started singing again. I laughed, I cooked, I was protected. This body healed and continues to heal. The pain can't live forever, the tunnel ends. It is so cliche and may not feel like it, but it's fucking true. Keep going. You owe it to yourself to take care of your body, to kiss your own skin, to admire your own scars. Your body and bones are resilient beyond all things. Let your body be resilient. <sighs> all the things we inherit as women. I walk into the East to prepare myself yet again for the conversation that happens over desert sun, piercing sky and thirsty cacti. The conversation where we have to spend hours affirming our worth and humanity as women. The conversation where we get parched from speaking so much and so quickly when the sand gets in our eyes and the sun steals moisture from our blessed skin. And we play ring around the rosy with all the women who ever came before us, our dear ever fleeting ancestors who say, it is not unreasonable for you to feel unsatisfied when you settle for someone who adds nothing to your life. Someone who makes you feel foggy and unclear, someone who cuts your corners and then folds you up and tucks you in a pocket, someone who clips your tongue and boxes your words. This is the old way, a way you have inherited as women, but the way you need to live no more. We talk and walk and talk and walk and talk and walk until we find them again, hiding behind the cacti, our bruised hearts say, please remind me, tell me again, I need to hear it. Our eyes close and our hands cover those as our knees sink so we can find the rhythm in their voices and rock our bodies in tune as they begin. It is not unreasonable for you to feel unsatisfied when you settle for someone who adds nothing to your life. You got it. It is important to be grateful to people who have awoken a piece of you but it is just as important to understand that those pieces of you will still be awakened if that person does not stay in your life. The whitest drug. White women, if we are so sure and adamant that patriarchy exists at the systemic and interpersonal level, how are we so quick to deny and diffuse conversations about white supremacy when women of color are calling us out in the same breath? 
And these are from my third book, Notes in Healing and Clarity, Volume 2. Floors. Thank you, universe, for giving me everything I thought I didn't want, but turns out I did. Thank you, universe, for taking away everything I thought I wanted to keep, but turns out I didn't. Immediate heart openings. You have to put something down if you want to hold something new. You have to mourn what is no more if you want to celebrate what is. Part of growing is when you begin to accept people beyond your old definitions of this versus that, that you have given space for nuance. Things that crawl. When the cold, hard self-doubt shows up and crawls up the back of your goosebump arm, close your eyes and speak so loudly and clearly, it can hear your firmness. Do I trust myself? Yes. 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 Over and over, as many times as ritual asks, until the self-doubt has starved and loosened its grip and fallen away. Accessories. If you walk around with your mind like a gun, everything will look like the target and a chance to shoot. If you walk around with your mind like a flower, everything will look like the sun and a chance for growth. The orange touch. It is absolutely necessary that you learn how to be by yourself so deeply that at times it is painful, it, but it's only painful in the beginning. Once you learn it, it's the greatest gift you can teach yourself and that you can have and you will cherish it so deeply. You'll be so in tune with yourself, your personal power will be through the roof. You'll be able to discern and detach more quickly. And perhaps most importantly, you will stop choosing things or people as void fillers since you know that you only need ones who add to your energy. And you will know because you already know what your energy by itself feels like. Easy, convenient, because it's their energy will become less meaningful than solitude because you will know and feel your energy exactly and realize you don't need to absorb those sticky shapes. This is the best thing you can give yourself. How to be alone with yourself while feeling full and complete because this births planets of clarity and wisdom that will bring you to everything else in your life that you have yet to love. what March had to say. One, let any painful games you've been playing be over. Two, your flowers that bloom in your fresh spring were planted and growing in your frozen winter, even if it didn't feel like the soul soil was even there. Three, if you're not able to offer the light to others freely, then you are not truly the light. Four, say thank you to your ancient sand soul for choosing your young sparkly heart. Five, people respond to the energy of you existing in your authentic truth more so than any external thing you could be doing to show that truth of how you are. Six, the reward is that there is no reward. Seven, all earth wants is nurturing and to nurture. Eight, the stars don't lie, baby doll. Blood eclipse. There are things in this world that find us, leech us, take from us, touch us with those hands and that chilling swiftness. Things that are unexplainable and things that come no matter how many rules are followed. Things we can't explain, things we don't want to explain, things we never stop trying to explain. The volcano of this reaching sticks a silver hand into your soul and I don't know how it gets out. And I'm so sorry to anyone who comes to know it. Okay, then last, these are some poems that will be in my fourth book, which will be out at the end of this year. Letting a woman's no be a no. How often do you let a woman's no be a no and not a game or an invitation or a puzzle or a challenge or a conquering or a playground? How often do you immediately try to rebuke and slither through those two letters thinking it was just a mistake? How could she actually mean that? 
How many times does she have to say it? And how hysterical does she have to get before you understand no as no? But also before the hysteria is too much for you and before you give her no, you give her crazy. How many times do you have to hear no before she shifts into a human who deserves her desire met and not an ego trip for you to put your clammy hands against and squeeze into something for you? Are you confused or are you in denial? Eventually confusion becomes a choice. Eventually learned helplessness becomes a choice. Eventually the only thing left to change if you actually want to change your life is you. This one is the rose that grew from concrete, the concrete from which I grew. All hail the cement, layers and layers, gray, grainy, foggy, confusing, filling the cracks, freezing the movements, blocking the sun, disconnecting the earth beat. All hail the smallest hope, the smallest light, the smallest glimmer of angels floating through. One expansion at a time, one reclaiming at a time, one vision of the reddest rose at a time. All hail the first green bud, the life force eyes growing toward the warmth, each rhythm pushing and expanding. One hope, one light, one glimmer, one thought of peace is all that is needed to water the self and grow, to go beyond the cement they poured onto and into you, to find a way, then the next, then the next, to know you are free and always have been and they can pour all the cement they want, but it is all an illusion. The cement has all been an illusion. If you can only remember to think the thought of the reddest rose, all hail the rose that grew from concrete, all hail the concrete from which I grew. God does not have an ego, but you do. Your life is not meant to be a struggle forever and ever. There is no reward for how much suffering you go through. If it doesn't feel good, you have permission to leave. Frustrating times are always an opportunity to unbind and untether yourself, to let go, to choose you. And remember, no matter what happens, no one can ever take away your work ethic, your creativity, your dreams and goals, your unique resonance as you, your relationship with God, your relationship dedication and growth to yourself, how you act, how you present yourself, how you respond to life. Self-respect is a noble trait. Patience is a noble trait. A clean conscience is a reward all by itself. Keep your heart and intentions pure and you will always be taken care of. Whatever you hold in your heart comes true. If there is pain in your heart, allow it. Whatever is in your heart, allow it. Your gazelle eyes and turtle tongue only ask that you graze these truths through your whiskered cheeks and you allow whatever is in your lion heart. The sandy path can hold your padded feet as long as you allow whatever is in your heart to not rule you, to not overcome those falcon instincts and flowering dance that guide that swirled body into the twirled galaxy. Whatever is in your heart, allow it for whatever you hold in your heart comes true. Thank you.